is okay. It is terrific to see everyone joining in. Welcome. If if you could just take a moment while we're we're welcoming everyone to the Pathways to Sustainable Invention Speaker Series, we'd love it if you could jot down in the chat really quickly um, where you're where you're tuning in from, so that our panelists and moderator can uh, give shouts out to to those of you in the audience who are joining us tonight. Terrific. And I'm going to ask for panelists or uh, my moderator to help me out by giving me a thumbs up to see if you can see our screen. Excellent. All right. Wonderful. All right. As everyone trickles in, I'd like to again say thank you and welcome to joining us for the Pathways to Sustainable Invention virtual speaker series, how Black inventors are paving the way in modern science for a sustainable future. We are thrilled that you're joining us tonight. My name is Kate Anderson, and I am the director of K-12 Education for Beyond Benign. It is my honor um, on behalf of the team of Society for Science and the National Organization for the Advancement um, of the, oh boy, oops, sorry about that for the National Organization for the Professional Advancement for Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers to welcome you all to the series. And we're gonna give one more minute to let everybody join in here. It's terrific to see folks from all over joining. So, and again, uh, a big thank you to, to everyone for signing the code of conduct. And as a reminder, we are in a virtual space and we wanna thank you for signing that code of conduct and keeping ourselves on mute during the panel presentations. And we will ask that you put your questions during the question and answer into the chat for us. So, and what I'd like to do is really just turn it over to our moderator for the night. who's gonna introduce and kick us off. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Daryl Boyd. He is a research chemist at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory developing novel infrared transmitting optical polymers. He's also the co-founder and senior scientist for Science Made Simple LLC, through which he offers his science knowledge to organizations throughout the country or in various forums as Dr. Boyd the Chemist. And this includes his STEM-focused YouTube channel. His honors include winning Nova Shea's Lloyd Ferguson Young Science Award in 2016, as well as being named to CNE News Talented, um, Talented 12 Class of 2018. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Daryl, who's going to walk us through and introduce our fantastic lineup of panelists. And I'm gonna do that now. So here we go, Daryl. Well, greetings everyone. I hope you're all excited. I'm so, I personally am very excited that so many people have signed up and that you're all gonna be a part of this wonderful event, Pathways to Sustainable Invention. Um, a wonderful speaker series that is kicking off tonight with a wonderful panel. So I sincerely hope that you all enjoy it. Please do engage with us, put your, your questions in the chat and uh, definitely pay attention to what the speakers have to say, and we should have a wonderful time. Now, we are going to stay on time. So with that, I do want to introduce our panelists. Uh, we have three wonderful panelists, uh, the first of which is Ben Barnes, who is a recent graduate of the Energy Institute High School in Houston, Texas. Throughout high school, he was actively involved in multiple organizations and extracurriculars, including the Student Government Association, the Swim Team, Ping Pong Club, Invent Team, and the TXRX Makerspace Program. He is now a first year at the University of Virginia, 
Though he's not yet certain, Ben is considering majoring in astronomy or physics and minoring in music. In his spare time, he can be found composing piano pieces, reading, writing, and swimming, though not normally all at once. Our next panelist is, oh, I'm sorry, let me go ahead and uh, give the floor to Ben. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, next slide, if you could. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so my name is, in fact, Ben Barnes. Um, as uh, Dr. Boyd said, yeah, I'm a recent graduate of the Energy Institute High School in Houston, Texas. Um, and I'm at the University of Virginia currently as a first year um, where I'm sort of debating studying, you know, astronomy or physics um, and maybe like music or engineering, something in that vein. Um, yeah, so my first brush with inventing things was when I was pretty young, I was really interested in origami and paper airplanes as well as medieval weaponry, weirdly enough. So a good chunk of my childhood was devoted to, you know, making the best paper airplanes or desktop trebuchets or what have you. Um, but then in the early part of high school, I was exposed to the JV Invent Teams program, which essentially guided young high school students like us through the invention process in a more structured way than maybe we'd previously been exposed to. So that was freshman and sophomore year. Um, and then in my freshman and junior years, I had the opportunity to participate in um, a small competition within our school district called Together with Tech. Uh, the goal of this competition wasn't to create a final product necessarily, but to have a pretty well thought out proposal about something we could potentially invent. Um, and so our group researched nuclear power and some of the ways that we can make it more sustainable. Um, and then next slide, if you could. Cool. Uh, yeah, so the summer before our senior year, so I guess that was around a year ago, um, some friends and I decided to apply for the Invent Teams engineering grant through the Lemelson MIT program with the goal of recycling wasted plastic from 3D printers, because it turns out around 20% of the plastic that goes into 3D printers gets wasted in various forms. Um, so I know it's a bit small, but that's the schematic of our product in the top left-hand corner of the screen, um, as well as some of our you know, designs and models sprinkled around there. Um, and that was by far the largest opportunity the 10 of us on the team had to innovate and invent sustainably for an issue that you know, we all recognize to be moderately significant. Um, since we use 3D printing technologies quite a bit at our high school for projects and things like that. Um, and funnily enough, this project actually had a lot of ties to the biochemistry and sustainable resource use JV invent teams, like the, um, the intro invent, invent teams experience um, that we've done in past years. Yeah, so we made a ton of progress on that front, even though, unfortunately, we weren't able to get our filament shredder pellet extruder set up to work quite as we hoped. Um, it was still, you know, a really good experience. I'm super grateful to have been a part of that. Um, and then the most recent thing that I've been a part of that encourages, you know, not necessarily invention, but also just the creative expression of ideas um, is something called the Breakthrough Junior Challenge, which is an international competition for students age 13 to 18 to create a three minute video explaining a science or maths topic in a creative way. So I decided to explain the physics concept of time dilation. Um, and that's like the thumbnail for the video on the top right. Um, and I actually, just learned that I'm a finalist for that competition, which is really cool. So we'll see about the results in November. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to check it out. It's on YouTube. Um, maybe I can post the link in the chat or something. Um, yeah, but that's just about everything I've been up to over the past, you know, four years. Um, and I'm happy to talk later about the JV Invent Teams experience, even though that was, you know, quite some time ago now, or elaborate on the Invent Teams grant and our project to try and improve the sustainability of 3D printing or the Breakthrough Challenger. Yeah, any of that stuff later. So thank you. Awesome. I hope some people have questions for uh, Ben. All right, our next panelist is Talia Thomas. Talia is a research associate in the Rapid Technology Feasibility Lab at Zymergen. Along with her research team, Talia develops commercial technology using alternative feedstocks that are inspired by nature and consistent with the principles of green chemistry. I know benign, Beyond Benign is interested in that. Talia received her uh, bachelor's in, of science in mechanical engineering from North Carolina A&T State University in 2019. Since graduating, Talia works to put humanity and the environment at the heart of her research while still creating value for her company. She co-pioneered her first 
her, her plant's first isopropanol hand sanitizer campaign and advocated to donate a portion of the plant's production to local low-income public schools during the COVID pandemic. So Leah started inventing and ideating in elementary school and is excited to share her passion for exploration. So Talia, the floor is yours. Hey everyone, thank you so much for having me. You can go to the next slide, Kate. Yep, um, so my name is Talia Thomas. I am a research associate level two at Zymergen and I received my mechanical engineering degree from the North Carolina A&T State University. While at a and I was also uh, Vice President of Engineers Without Borders, um, which also fueled a lot of my ideating and creative thinking in college. Um, I was a member of the a and cheer team, amongst other miscellaneous organizations. I had a blast. <laughs> Can you go to the next slide? So um, my road to engineering is, um, I think, kind of funny. Um, to be quite honest with you guys, I became an engineer because I was inspired by my favorite movie of all time, which is Disney's Meet the Robinsons. And if you've seen that, it's about a little orphan boy who um, creates a time machine and a memory scanner in hopes to, to find his mother. Um, it's a great movie. Check it out. I hope I'm not telling my age. <laughs> um, but after watching that movie, I was convinced that I could build a time machine. I was also... Um, sending letters to Professor Amos Ori of the Israeli Institute, asking him about his theories on like time donuts and, and gravity and wormholes, thinking that I, a fourth grader, could like figure out the dimensions of time and space. Um, so eventually I kind of let that, that dream subside for a little bit, put it to the background, but my passion for innovation and invention stuck around for sure. Um, in fact, it kind of transformed something more uh, centered around sustainability, environment, and most importantly, people. So my first real invention or prototype of <laughs> a, con a conceived idea that I had was actually in 10th grade. Um, I worked with one of my close friends to uh, build a detachable exhaust gas filtration mechanism. So this was the first time that I had an idea and I brought it to life in real form. Did it work? No, but I learned a lot about the creative process, prototyping, and a lot about failure, which we'll talk about later on in the, um, in the presentation. My second big idea uh, was one that I kind of carried with me to college. Uh, essentially, it was a self-purifying solar power powered piping system. I was inspired by one of my professors who was uh, educating me about some of the inaccessibilities uh, that local Ghanaian villages had to water. Um, they had access to potable water, but they had to walk 10 to 20 miles to go get it. Um, so I started thinking about what if we had a piping system that purified itself as water was flowing through it. Um, I was also able to present this proposal to Selectra International, uh, which is kind of like a, a grassroots um, nonprofit working in the African space uh, to, build, to bring like global energy solutions uh, to the communities that need it the most. Um, that is still kind of in the works. I'm not letting that dream die, uh, but it's definitely been prototyped and the idea is out there. Um, and then my first big idea that actually worked, <laughs> I, I, I put, again was like fueled by this, this passion for people and humanity and, and most importantly research. And so I was interning at a lab at MIT focusing on building technology. And my primary focus was to help support uh, a local community that was devastated by an earthquake in Bhuj, India. So Bhuj is a desert region in, in India and it reaches about 115 degrees Fahrenheit um, daily. Uh, these folks did not have access to AC. It was an energy scarce population. So they were literally cooking in their tin huts. So we were researching ways to naturally passively ventilate their homes so that they were livable and breathable. Well, there are different shading parameters that you can put on these um, housing structures to achieve that goal. And at first we were just looking locally at Bouj India. Well, I uh, created a MATLAB model that expanded that scope. So now we can optimize shading parameters and natural ventilation around the world by inputting geographic coordinates. So that was the first idea that I was like, man, 
I might be onto something with this invent inventing thing. Um, and that's really like gave me a lot of the courage and confidence to, you know, really chase my passions and, and move in my interests. You can go to the next slide. So some of my recent innovations. So after uh, graduating from a and I began my career as a maintenance slash mechanical engineer at Dow Chemical. Um, while at Dow, as was mentioned, I did co-pioneer the plant's first IPA hand sanitizer campaign. So essentially what that means is that my plant was built to create and output a certain type of chemical. IPA was not one of them. I worked on a team that got together creatively and collaboratively, figured out a way to utilize our existing uh, process flow and our existing equipment and figure out a way to produce isopropanol in support of the, the hand sanitizer shortage throughout America. Um, it was amazing, but we also took a step further to donate to our, our local Title IX um, schools, which was really, really, really impactful. And I was really excited to be a part of that. And now I've since transitioned, I've taken a big step from the traditional mechanical engineering space and I've pivoted into a chemistry bio-based arena um, that's way out of my comfort zone, but I can tell you I have no regrets. I'm learning so much and this is definitely a space that I need to be in if I really wanna be a game changer in the green chemistry circular economy um, space. So my work at Zymergen, I, I basically work to, to integrate and in, um, alternative feedstocks and make them more competitive so that they can displace the traditional use of um, petrochemicals in our, our um, sorry, our, our, our practices today. Um, so we basically invent, we're an invention lab. Um, and I'm really excited to be a part of something that is, you know, making a difference. Awesome, thank you so, so much to Leah. And our finer, final panelist is Eunice Heath. Uh, Eunice Heath serves as Corporate Director for Sustainability. She leads the coordinated planning and implementation of the 2025 Sustainability Goals as well as sustainability integration across the company. And I believe that's in reference to Dow Chemical. Uh, she has a well-established career mm -hmm. at Dow working in a myriad in myriad roles from marketing, sales, supply chain, government affairs, and business leadership roles throughout her career. Sounds like a busy person. Uh, she is a recipient of numerous awards, including 2017 honoree of 40 Women to Watch Over 40 by Forbes Media, the 2020 honoree of 25 Women Shaking Up the Climate Movement by Green Biz, and recently named to the 2020 and 2021 her roles, heroes, role models for leadership in championing women in business and driving change for gender diversity in the workplace. Uh, Eunice, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Boyd. You know, it's really awesome to be on this panel with Ben and Talia. Um, you know, as you read through my bio, Dr. Boyd, one thing I wanted to provide for the audience is to get a perspective as to, um, you know, kind of how all of this started. Uh, I didn't initially start out um, thinking about uh, going into a career of sustainability, but I'll tell you, you know, when I was around third or fourth grade, my uh, love for science and math um, was quite significant. And I continued to excel in science and math all the way into high school. And it was a chemistry teacher that talked to me about careers in chemistry or in engineering. And I didn't know what an engineer was. Um, my family was a family of uh, either educators um, or sales professionals. And so I'd never seen anyone that looked like me um, as an engineer. I, I went to the University of Florida uh, and, and I got my BS in industrial and systems engineering. And that's where I connected with Dow. I interned with Dow in the commercial organization, which was for technical sales and marketing and joined Dow in 91. Um, and really the rest is history. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel the world um, uh, to very remote parts, the Amazon, India, um, to Dubai. I've been all over the world in uh, my vast career. 
And, you know, even though I'm not an inventor, as uh, our two previous panelists, in the course of my career, I've partnered with many customers up and down the value chain uh, and still do today as we address the major challenges that uh, our world faces. Uh, for those that may not know Dow, we are a material science company. Uh, next year, we'll celebrate 125 years. And uh, we're focused on addressing solutions for climate protection, circular economy, and ensuring we have safer and more sustainable uh, chemistry and products in, uh, in all of our value chains. Our technologies go into uh, all of the different products that uh, all of us as consumers use every day. Uh, most notably, the 5G infrastructure, uh, as well as um, uh, automotive, so light weighting to electric vehicles, um, as well as technology for the renewable energy market from geothermal to uh, products that uh, uh, go into the wind blades uh, and many different consumer and doable products as well. And so, uh, although I'm not an inventor, I partner for innovation across many different value chains. And, and you know, the role that I have, really I sit at the intersection of inclusion and sustainability every day. And uh, it's truly inspiring for me to hear the two previous panelists. And one uh, is uh, I'm a mentor of hers, and I'm really looking forward to see what's next for Talia. Uh, she knows I'm a champion. And, and Ben, I look forward to getting to know you as well. Um, so when I got my industrial systems engineering degree, I also wanted to uh, be a champion for business and uh, growing business and growing business more sustainably. So I got my master's from uh, the University of Michigan. Uh, I am really focused every day on unleashing the power of possible out of impossible, whether it is a young child as in third grade or seventh grade or high school to see that they can be an engineer, that they can make a difference, they can be a change maker, um, and they can be a contributor to sustainable development. Uh, so I'm also on the board of the United Nations Glo uh, Global Compact for the US, as well as Project Lead the Way which is really focused on K to career, building the STEM pipeline. And, uh, and every day I focus on uh, partnering with our historically black colleges and universities. Uh, we have five of them to build the pipeline of underrepresented minority talent in STEM careers. So if you go to the next slide, uh, this is why I do what I do every day. Uh, my legacy is from my family to the next generation to really enable a sustainable future for all not for some, but for all, uh, because it is possible. But we have this one planet. We have to nurture this planet. So the left hand of side of the screen, you can see my family. Uh, I am proud to say that Miles and Bronson, my twins, uh, are IT professionals, cybersecurity, data scientists. Uh, my daughter, Blake, next to my husband, is a biomedical engineering student at Florida a &M University. And my daughter, Sophie, between the boys, who knows? We're looking forward to seeing what's next with her. She's a high school student and has a love for music as well as language. So she's teaching herself Japanese. And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, I recruit day in and day out for our next generation engineers, scientists, teachers, uh, professionals, and uh, leaders in this great world. Uh, so these are students from a number of HBCUs that have come to Dow and a number of them on the screen have come to Dow uh, permanently. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Boyd. Uh, I am so honored to be here and look forward to our conversation. Awesome, awesome, a wealth of experience there. And so you all have heard from these three wonderful panelists. I, I've been scanning the chat. I haven't seen any questions come up just yet. I'll kick off the, the question and answer portion with a few questions of my own for each of the panelists. And so uh, Ben, you are my first victim here. <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, how did you get involved in the breakthrough competition? Oh yeah. Um, so uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was two years ago that I first learned about the competition um, through a video on Khan Academy, I believe. Um, Cause Sal Khan has done a lot of like promotional videos cause he reaches basically that exact target audience that the Breakthrough Junior Challenge um, is looking for. Um, yeah, so I think I saw a video about it from him, um, but wasn't 
like I didn't put forth an application that year. I'm not sure why. Maybe I wasn't confident in my skills as a videographer or I didn't have an idea. Um, but then this past year, I really decided to make like a concerted effort into putting forth like a product uh, for the competition because it was my last year of eligibility because um, I'm turning you know 19 this month. Um, and my dad, like that previous summer, lent me a book called The Elegant Universe by Brian Green. Um, and in it, like towards the beginning, I'd say the first third, um, there is a section about the topic that I'm explaining of time dilation, um, which is essentially the idea that as an object moves through space more quickly, it moves through time less quickly. It's kind of like weird and it doesn't really make much sense, but that's the, that's the just like the in a nutshell version. Um, yeah. And then I just, you know, with a, a free Adobe license that my school district was giving out to students that year. Um, I, you know, had the resources and the tools to do it. So I just went for it. Yeah. Nice. Right, so I see a question for you, Ben, uh, in the chat. It, it says, what role did your science teachers play in developing your interest, skill, and knowledge for inventions? Yeah. And, um, and let me let me just also say, uh, Talia, I'll, I'll have you also address that same question um, since you have such a, a interesting background in that arena as well. So Ben, go ahead first and then Talia follow up with that. Okay, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, I would say they had the largest um, relative like role in developing my interest in you know science and innovation and things like that. Um, primarily because most of the extracurriculars that I were involved that I was involved in that had to do with innovation were led by those teachers. So they were like my role models and my leaders throughout that. Um, yeah, so they had a massive role. All right, Talia, same question. Uh, what role did your science teachers play in developing your interest? Uh, you've, you've done a lot of thinking, it looks like, from an early age yeah. and taking that thinking a step further and then a step further. And so uh, what role did uh, science teachers, perhaps other mentors and, and leaders in your life play? Um, yeah, so I can say that I've been really, really, really blessed to have parents and family that um, kind of encourage every endeavor, every passion of mine, no crazy, no, no matter how crazy it is. Um, so that's kind of what sparked my curiosity at an early age uh, was my, my family laying that foundation for me and giving me the confidence that you can go chase your dreams. So once I um, got to high school, I, I went to a STEM magnet high school. Um, so STEM was the brand uh, and it was very normal to have these crazy ideas and, you know, act on them or, you know, um, so I, I had my, my science teachers, my tech ed teachers, my shop teachers, my shop teacher was in there showing me how to use um, <laughs> the, the cutting saw and, 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 the drill and the drill press and, and figuring out how I can like best prototype my ideas and bring them to life. Um, my biology teachers uh, were kind of teaching me what they could, whatever, what limited knowledge I had as, as a 10th grade bio student, um, the ins and outs of molecular sieves and how we could use them in, in my application. Um, so I would say it definitely takes a village for me. Um, and I'm really, really blessed to have that village. I'm wondering, uh, Talia, do you have any patents or are you, if you don't, are you thinking about filing ever for any patent or yes, intellectual uh, property? Yeah, so I have a, a poor man's patent, original patent. Um, I call it a poor man's patent on the, the pure pipe <laughs> idea. Um, I wouldn't really call that an invention, but it's definitely a, an idea that that's very unique um, and one that I hold dear to my heart. I haven't figured out exactly how I want to, you know, construct it, um, but the idea is still there and it's still definitely a work in progress. All right. I see there's another question in, in the chat, but before I get to that particular question, I do want to ask Eunice a question. Um, you have a, a wealth of, of experience in the roles that you've played. You've played numerous roles in, even in the company that you're in now. Um, but you're at a big company. So I'm curious with the, with the theme of a sustainable economy being our topic, uh, what role or part of our topic at least, what role do you think big companies like Dow can play in creating a responsible and sustainable economy? Dr. Boyd, uh, that's a very good question and uh, quite a uh, relevant question today. Uh, we're just coming back from our Investors Day uh, meeting last week in New York, uh, where we shared with our investors how we are innovating 
and how we are transforming our operations to be uh, carbon neutral by 2050. And that's no small feat. It means, you know, many of our assets that typically are in the ground, you know, 50 to 60 years, we really have to think differently in terms of how we manufacture, how we access um, energy, um, and how we address water, water stewardship in our overall operations, and how we partner uh, with our customers up and down the value chain to address the uh, solutions that are required in order for um, many of our customers in our own operations to be carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, so industry has a major role to play in terms of addressing climate change, climate protection solutions. Industry and governments have a role to play as we address uh, bringing circular solutions, whether it's circular circularity from a water perspective or circularity in terms of the, the products we use from plastics to bedding to you name it, everything really needs to be circular because we only have one planet. Uh, we don't have two or three planets that we can go to. Uh, so we have a major role to play as industry and uh, I'm, I'm proud to be able to partner with our research and development organization, uh, manufacturing organization, as we take a look at biomaterials, as we look at post-consumer recycle products to be brought back into our operations in order to make more products for the value chains in which we serve. Uh, so it's a significant uh, feat and challenge, but that is what um, brought me to Dow. Uh, I loved the marriage of technology and science in order for, at the time, my mindset was not around sustainability, uh, but it was really that recognizing the power of chemistry and material science in every aspect of what we do. And I wanted to be a part of that, whether it's from the built environment all the way to pharmaceutical, as well as um, automotive. So those were key markets and home and personal care markets were markets I had responsibility for over the course of my career. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful answer. Um, I'll, I'll actually just throw a little shameless self-promotion out there. Sustainability is very important to me. And I recently published a paper on some uh, polymer STEM demonstrations that you can do that are safer and greener. So I'll actually post a link to that in the chat and do check out the cover art for the issue of that journal for this month. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I, I thought it up and a friend of mine actually put it out there. So I will, I will share that <laughs> as well in the chat. Uh, that said, I'll start again with you, Eunice on this one. Uh, the question was asked uh, for any of the panelists, what is the most fun aspect of inventing or innovating and what's the most frustrating? Now, I know you said you're not an inventor, but you have you have drifted through so many roles. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> so uh, is that something you enjoy? What could be frustrating about yeah, that? So I'll, and I'll give you a very a recent one, actually. Um, so, oh. you know, the, the most um, uh, fun, I guess I would say, when I think about innovation and uh, when products come to market is when they really, uh, when you really see that they work, right? Uh, they are delivering on what we are promising to the market. So I'll give you just one example. Uh, we brought a product to the market for the textile industry called EcoFast Pure. And it's a product that we actually partnered with Ralph Lauren. So if any of you uh, saw any of the, the Tokyo Olympics, uh, well, some of our, Olymp well, our Olympians wore one of the shirts from Ralph Lauren uh, that uh, was the dyeing process utilized EcoFast Pure. And so why is this important? Well, the dyeing process is a very uh, chemical intensive um, and water intensive and energy intensive process. And our product actually uh, delivered on what we committed. So significant reduction in uh, the amount of chemicals to be used in the dyeing process, which means it's not in, it's not going down the drain or anything like that, um, as well as 50% uh, reduction in the amount of water used, as well as energy usage. And when you see that, that's that's what we're talking about, about changing the way we innovate, changing the way we bring products to market. And that is what is the most fun and um, just exciting part about chemistry and material science um, now. So what's the most frustrating? The frustrating part for me as a uh, business leader is when it takes a long time for the market to grab a hold in the marketplace. And we've done all this innovating and investing and then 
it takes a long time for us to get the uh, uh, return on the investment. So, uh, you know, our stakeholders want to make sure that when we invent and when we invest, we're getting that return. Uh, so that can be frustrating, but the rewards are worth it. So uh, just wanted to share that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, same question to you, Talia. Uh, what, what is uh, driving your invention thoughts? Um, is it frustrating? What aspects is frustrating? What part is not so frustrating? Um, I don't, I mean, it's kind of twofold. It's like a, it's like a double-edged sword. What makes you frustrated is also what makes you really excited. Um, and it's all part of the process. You have to, I definitely have learned patience. Sorry, there's a lot going on outside. Um, I've definitely learned patience with ideating and, and inventing because I work in an invention lab. Every day can be frustrating when you're, but your experiments don't want to work. Um, but also when you get that little data point that's like, this might be promising. I think we're onto something. It makes it all worth it, um, especially when you know your end goal um, is really building a future that you want your kids or even even yourself to live in. Um, so, I guess it's just trusting the process, honestly, um, and then rolling with it and seeing where the journey takes you. It's all exciting and frustrating. All right, Ben. Same question. Um, yeah. What aspects of coming up with inventions are fun, and what's frustrating? Yeah. So, I would say for the most part, any project that I work on that has like larger implications in myself is on some level fulfilling. You know. So I would say that's like the the fun, enjoyable part of uh, the invention process. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, in a nutshell, that's that's what it would be for me. And then the most frustrating part, uh, I guess when stuff that you think should work doesn't work, you know, especially with like mechanical engineering um, inventions and innovations where like you think, you know, in theory, these two things should interact in such a way that you get a desired output and it doesn't. Yeah, that's kind of bothersome, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Um... This is for all the panelists. Uh, I'll start with Ben. What advice would you give to young people? Not noting that you said you're 19 or going to be 19. Yeah. That really felt like, you know, you were attacking me. I feel like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> so, but what advice? And I'm just teasing. What advice yeah. would you give to young people who may be interested in innovating about how to get started bringing their ideas into fruition? Oh, that's a tough one. Um. I guess, well, so this was something that kind of, that I had struggles with, I guess, in the past. Um, I would see something that someone else had invented and wanted to invent something like that so I could share in their the glory and like the law that they get from that invention. Um, and I would say, try to disconnect like whatever praise you might get or whatever, um, yeah, I guess whatever selfish praise you might get from the invention process from like why you're actually inventing. Um, so keep keep the reasons for you know your desire to you know make a, a solar powered water treatment pipe or whatever um, at the forefront. That's probably the thing that helps me be the best inventor that I can, and that's something that I would you know strongly encourage other young people like myself to bear in mind. Wow, Ben, you're 19, but that was very wise. <laughs> I like that. That was very wise, uh, Talia. Uh, same question. Yeah, so step one, uh, what Ben alluded to, figure out what drives you, always move in your interest and move in your passions. Um, and then also, I know I kept an invention journal. So now it's on my phone because like technology. But <laughs> when I was growing up, I had a blue little invention journal and I would write every single idea down. It didn't matter if it was like, didn't make any type of sense to anyone else. Um, but it was an idea. and out of the million ideas that you write, you're bound to hit one that's like, hey, maybe this could work. Um, and I even look back at that invention journal and I'm like, with the knowledge and experience that I've now acquired, I can probably make some of the, these ideas come to fruition. And then I would say lastly, and probably the most importantly, if you can get a mentor, um, get multiple mentors and get multiple mentors that don't look like you. Um, and can speak for you um, when you're not in certain rooms. So that goes to whether you're trying to invent something and get someone to buy it, or if you're just trying to get an internship out of high school, you know? So those, those are my tidbits. Uh, we can go deeper into that, but we're stretched for time. 
also very wise sayings there. Um, All right. Eunice, same question. Um, where are you right now? Yeah, am I unmuted? Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, when I think about um, my journey and, and my children's journey, it really started out with getting just exposure um, to different programs where you can go on the weekends or even over the course of the summer to uh, have those moments of exploration. Um, and, and for me, it was, you know, I was a little bit of an odd student in high school, but I spent quite a bit of uh, time with biology and chemistry and a number of different um, programs that provided uh, further uh, exploration of uh, chemistry and biology in high school. And then for my children, I did exactly the same, uh, where I exposed them to different uh, programs where they could learn more about what engineers do, what is what different sciences, and uh, to see what was spark that interest and what they may grab a hold on. Uh, so th those are the, the ways that, um, you know, just try and provide the exposure uh, as much as you can uh, in order for, to, to see where the interest may, uh, may find that spark. Awesome. So I think we're running out of time and we only have time for one more question. And I see that there's, um, and I apologize for those questions that I, we won't get to tonight. Um, but there is a question for Eunice, and I think it'll be useful for the audience tonight. Um, so the question is, what sort of recruitment does Dow do in colleges mm -hmm. or maybe even high schools to find the next generation of employees and team members? No, it's a very good question. And, and as I mentioned in my opening comments, I've been in, recruit, in recruiting for Dow for probably about 20 out of the 30 years. Uh, for Dow, we have a very structured recruiting program at uh, strategic universities. Uh, we have about, uh, I think, 15 or 17 strategic universities, and five of them are historically Black colleges and universities uh, as well. And uh, in addition to that, you know, we recognize that not all students will go to a four-year college, and uh, we have a number of different roles that we uh, uh, that we support through our apprenticeship program uh, for individuals that that may get a either a two-year degree or are, you know, they, they get really, they learn on the job in terms of uh, different technician types of roles that we have in the company. So recruiting for Dow is quite significant. Um, so we have 35,000 employees in the company, 22,000 of them are manufacturing and engineering. And then the next largest population is our research and development uh, for the company. So uh, we're actively engaged and actively partnered uh, with a number of organizations to help to build the, the STEM pipeline as well. Awesome, thank you so much. And I do want everyone just to take a moment and, and to thank our panelists, uh, Ben Barnes, Talia Thomas, and Eunice Heath for wonderful responses. I mean, this discussion, I would do wish it could go much longer. You all have uh, provided such insight. And I think uh, what you said tonight has been very helpful, um, but we are out of time. And so I do want to thank the host of tonight's occasion. That is Beyond Benign. Uh, Nobushe, again, the National Organization for the Professional Advancement of Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers, also the Society for Science, and do want to thank the sponsor, um, our sponsors for tonight's event, um, particularly we thank the Lemelson Foundation. And so with that, Kate, unless there's anything else, um, I think that's all we have. And oh, I did want to mention that the, there's a, Novoche has a junior scholars program. I saw Dr. Ryder Keter Moore put that in the chat. And so do check that out. Novoche has opportunities for you as well. And so with that, we do thank you all and have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. And we do hope that you'll be joining us on December 10th and our follow-up events to hear from more amazing panelists and moderators. So did want to make that quick plug. And I know that we've got that thrown in the chat too. This has been really fantastic and looking forward to seeing many of you, hopefully all of you at the next event. So thanks so much. Have a great night. Everybody.